Hi guys, my name is Layla Sophia. I am an artist and fine jewelry designer. If you like contemporary fine jewelry, if you like luxury handbags, all things interiors, and I have some fun videos for you. Today, you guys, I've been going over some lists, some video ideas, doing some research, and I realized a pattern that, um, yeah, I've had some vintage and new Chanel bags on like several of these lists. So let's get into what's on my radar. If you guys are new here, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I can't wait to see you in all of my future videos. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at Layla Sophia Jewelry. I put out videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, and so I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. As you guys who know me, you know my bag collection. If you're new here, you're gonna see more of my bag collection coming up soon. Soon. You know that like when I love something, I love it into Bottega and the Row. I've gotten multiple bags from those different collections. And Chanel is the one I just for right now have my vintage camera bag, which you guys know I rave about. She really was like the luxury bag that started this luxury bag fandom. But I have yet to get another Chanel bag. And honestly, I don't know why that is. I think I just like, when I gravitate towards something, I kind of hyperfixate maybe a little bit. And recently there have been so many more Chanel bags on my brain. So I'm gonna give you some of my vintage, some of my new ones. Again, for a while I was like, ooh, Maybe I'll just get vintage Chanel and be cool. But you know, I never was a Chanel hater at like the price increases. Again, I always say I have a very small business. I don't understand what goes on behind the scenes, competition, raises, product demand, yada, 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 all that stuff. But it is also just like absolutely ridiculous to fathom the price of like, you know, we're now paying five figures for just classic flaps. But the one thing that I like about Chanel A is the wide variety of bags on the pre-loved and vintage market. One of the first ones being like the OG. I do really quite love the 2.55, AKA the original flat bag. I don't know, I think I'd probably more so lean towards a vintage classic flap. Again, if anybody wants to drop me by, you know, I'm turning 30 next week. If anybody wants to drop me by a gift, sure, I'll take a classic flap, which would be absolutely ridiculous, but I have looked at vintage classic flops, however, I keep kind of like zooming into the 2.55. And the more I see unboxings of it, the more I see it in people's collections. Oh my gosh, I just found Claire Banks for the first time, which like, yes, I'm late to the game. Her bag collection, geez louise. I watched all of her like Chanel bag <laughs> collection going over all of her bags. And again, her 2.55 is like pretty incredible. I found a couple on Fashion File that are not that bad. Again, you know me, I'll go for a beater bag any day. And so that's, uh, you know, that's teetering on my list. And then I saw the newest 22 bag, which you guys know I've talked about. I loved that bag from the second it came out. I know it was very controversial, very similar to the YSL Ikea bag. Like, you know, you truly, there are some bags that just like completely divide everybody. I loved it. I know everybody calls it a trash bag and there were quality issues. I don't even know, but I have tried one of those on and I kind of love them. And the new one, they took what looks to be like one half of a zipper and made it like faux quilting on the bag. Am I being so cheesy or like, is this so cool? I told you guys what like absolutely sparked this in my brain genuinely. I was just at like UPS shipping something as I often am. There was someone in there, she definitely worked in the fashion industry. She had the largest version in black. I'm wearing it backwards and I was like, you're a genius. It looked so good on her and it made me want one and I might have a bunch saved. I kind of feel like, you know, I haven't reached this phase in my life yet, but like, is this kind of like the ultimate mom bag? I feel like it kind of could be, especially in the large, even the medium. But this new quilted version, Oh, like, I don't know if I'm being, I don't know, maybe that's my like weird, I'm super minimal. And then all of a sudden I like that very random for me, but I kind of am obsessed. Oh, and the bag that I've talked about with you guys, a bunch I need. Okay, so there's like two ends of the spectrum. I think for vintage bags, I need a mini square flap and I need a jumbo XXL, whatever they're called. I totally need one of each of these of jokes that like, I can't be trusted in Japan yet because I'll need some, I'll need some major funds to be able to go there because it just seems like they have the craziest selections. Do I want like a beautiful pastel purple or pink mini square flap? Totally. 
But also, like, if I found a beige one, oh my god, that would be incredible. I did last year, it sold. But I found a navy blue jumbo vintage that I was like, it was kind of gorgeous, but also just like, I feel like it's so hard with Chanel not to go black, even though I don't really have any black bags. I just have my one from the row. If you guys own one of these, I'm dying to hear your thoughts because I really go back and forth. And I know opposite ends of the spectrum, but just like so classic, so chic. I, I'm interjecting here with a story because I just thought about this. The very first store, you guys know I talk about my aunt all the time, who I love, who passed away. She was, you know, she was just a fabulous, fabulous Upper East Sider. Fabulous beyond words and genuinely one of the first stores that she took me at when I think I was 16 for my 16th birthday. She took me into Chanel. You know, I, I probably then didn't understand like the weight of this and she bought me those like, oh my God, this is so like mid 2000s. She bought me the CC rhinestone earrings. I still have them. I wore those to the ground. I wore those every single day. I feel like I need to reignite the Chanel love. This is the craziest story also, but before we get into more bags, I'm just adding this in here for some sort of like weird kismet thing. I was on the street two mornings ago and my dog, you know, like it's, I live in the city, it's really crazy. So like my dog gets to go to the bathroom in the mornings and they're usually the dogs like all do their business and don't really interact with each other, but there was a dog that I'd never seen before. It was a mini Yorkie and like a block away, I saw that the dog like stopped and didn't want to move. And the owner was like, usually owners will pull their dogs away, but the owner stopped too. And I was like, uh, all right, we'll go say hi. So we went to say hi with my doggy and I go and she's like, this is Coco. And I was like, your dog's name is Coco. You have a mini dog named Coco, as in Coco Chanel. My Aunt Susan had, I know this is a crazy story. My Aunt Susan always had a mini Yorkie named Coco. These little reminders, it was just really, really nice. So, you know, the spiritual reminders that like, she's here, she's watching, you know. It was anyways, it was a ridiculous story. But um, yeah, we met an adorable dog named Co Coco and Matisse. Pretty freaking adorable, if you do ask me. <laughs> New York story. Back to the topic at hand. I have talked about this, so I'll be quick, but I went in to what goes around comes around. I had never seen a bowler bag, a vintage bowler bag in person. I also have never seen the medallion bags in person. Both of those styles are very, very, as we always do, quote unquote, affordable. And like, I had been looking at them, I had saved some, but in person? They're kind of amazing. And speak on another vintage bag, I'm kind of into a vanity case, like as a little evening clutch. You guys know, you know, I've been talking about the Laura Piana bag for a while. I do kind of think I was one of the first ones to talk about it, but I digress. I love that bag so much. I was never really a fan of the mini Kelly. You guys know, of course, my holy grail bag is a Kelly pochette, you know. That's years away. And so I was like, oh, the Laura Piana bag might, <laughs> might be perfect. Now it's, you know, trends have taken that bag over as well. But a Chanel vanity case kind of gives the same vibes. But Chanelified, you know what I'm saying? Like very similar, ooh, just like a little evening bag that wasn't really meant to be a bag. I feel like that's such a vibe. And you can find like beaten up ones of those for hundreds of dollars, shocker. Okay, let's go into a new bag because I've given you a lot of vintage because it's me, how can I not? There's a bag that, again, similar to the 22. I know a lot of people, I think the 19 wasn't as dividing. People really loved the 19. It just became so trendy that now I think people kind of flip-flopped, aren't as into it as much. I always, always, always love that bag. I always question why my sister-in-law doesn't have it. She's like a trendy, trendy gal. That would be so perfect for her. But then I found this like blue, kind of very fuzzy, very like, not like me, shearling style, but I found it on Bestie and I was like, I never, I've never been one to think that a shearling bag is cool, but there's 19 in shearling, especially I think it's like a mini or a small size. It's so cool. I have a, I have several 19s saved, I'm not gonna lie. One day, it does kind of seem like the most functional crossbody bag, but it's also very cool. And even though the trend cycle passed like years ago, it still seems kind of cool and like modern and very unlike a lot of things that I have in my collection. And then what we've all been waiting for, okay? The bag that has, you know, a lot of people talking, which I think a lot of people are excited about. <laughs> Some people 
are like really pro only the vintage ones, but there is a bag by Chanel that I have looked at before it became a re-edition. The Chanel Kelly, as a lot of us have admired. The Chanel Kelly Vintage. Oh my gosh. Like literally I found ones that sold on the real real years ago for like nothing. We're all jealous of those people. If you're one of them, I'm jealous of you who got them for a steal. And then they, you know, as they love to do, dropped the bomb of the re-edition. And sometimes they hit, like the 31, which we'll talk about in a second. 31, maybe, you know, maybe didn't hit as much, but this one has landed, you know, Barbie core, Margot Robbie wore it. It's, it's, I actually love it. And I have found some vintage ones. Seems very unlike me, but that patent leather black one, and I think the new ones come with a crossbody chain. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just like, yeah, I'm over here swooning over those beautiful bags. Just a couple more for you guys. And let's go ahead and talk about what I just hinted at. 31 bag, not really into the newer versions. However, of course it's me. So we know exactly what I'm about to say. I found a very similar, actually, very similar colored brown one of vintage 31 and it completely changed my mind. I was like, wait, <laughs> the vintage ones a vibe? Also seems like very functional bag. I'm kind of into it. I don't know, even just as like a really, really, really cool going out bag or dinner bag, this is gorgeous in the vintage version. Oh, and what has been on, like, I don't know why I haven't gotten one of these, truly. What has been on like my, for like the last, God only knows, like 10 years, what's been on my list? I genuinely, why haven't I done this? A Chanel backpack. Like I don't, something about it, like, can't leave my list. I love a vintage Chanel backpack. Like I've, I guess maybe I haven't found the exact style that I want and I kind of debate between the like normal flat ones or the drawstring ones. The drawstring ones just seem so easy, so cool, such a vibe, but then it's like, it's a backpack. I live in New York. Do I want a drawstring backpack? The flat ones, I'm not sure my vibe. I guess I just haven't found the exact perfect one, but like, again, kind of unlike me, the girl with no black bags. How can you not like want, Chanel makes you want a black bag and a vintage patent leather Chanel super beaten up backpack. Like it will make it onto my list one day. Again, maybe I just haven't like entered into that phase of like, okay, maybe I'm just wishing, wishful thinking, cause it's kind of the cool, like could be the coolest mom bag. I don't know, I'm just putting that out in the universe. For my last one that is nothing near underrated, my goodness, and this is, you know, last because it's gorgeous and it's one of the prettiest, the Coco handle. This bag is gorgeous and it's kind of undeniable. What I think is kind of underrated or maybe it's just like so unattainable is the like V herringbone almost quilted stitching. That one is just like, whew, that one is absolutely gorgeous. I'd again, I'd take a plain black one. Very unlike me, the Coco handle. It's honestly, I think that is just like such a gorgeous, timeless, ladylike, chic, elegant, all of the above, cool bags. Guys, that has been my Chanel very impractical and possibly very long-term wish list. These bags, like, what is going on? I don't know. I was so not a Chanel girl for a long time and they're just like pulling me in. Also, the fact that they have so many bags on the resale and vintage market, like, it kind of makes it really hard not to like, you know, have they, they really catch your eye. I cannot wait to hear all of your thoughts. Do you guys have any of these styles? Cause I'm dying to hear what you think. As always, thank you so, 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 so much. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Bye guys.